logic should serve love. I have heard a seeker is lost in the mountains. He was tired and thirsty. It is night and he sees a silver bowl with crystal clear water which he drinks and then sleeps. In the morning with the rays of sun on the horizon, he sees that the bowl was in fact a dirty old skull. He laughed and he became enlightened. This story is simple and has an immense meaning. The seeker saw in the skull the whole reality and our illusions about all that we are. He saw what we think is and what reality is and the difference between the reality and thinking is meaningless. He would have not taken that water, drunk that water, if he had known that it was in dirty old skull. He thought it was a beautiful bowl with crystal clear water. Our life is lived in illusion of crystal clear water, but really is totally different. Seeing the difference, he laughed at himself. And to be able to laugh at oneself can become a breakthrough. Normally we laugh at others, but we never laugh at oneself. And to be able to laugh at oneself can become a breakthrough and one can become enlightened. People laugh at others and people feel hurt if somebody laughs at them. But to come to an understanding where you see your own stupidity and your whole life is full of it. The moment you realize that your whole life is full of stupidity and you can give a laugh, you can have a break. We live in dreams, illusions, hallucinations and things like these. They do not correspond to reality at all. The reality is dirty old skull. He laughed at himself. And in this very laughter he became a different person. Now he will live with the reality whatever it is. Now no illusions will be needed, no hallucinations will be needed to cover it, to hide it. He has seen the point. The story is simple, but it is the story of the whole pilgrimage from darkness to light, from illusion to reality. Watch your mind, how it creates illusions about everything and then gets disillusioned and disturbed. You love a man, you love a woman, you create a certain illusion about the man or the woman. It is not the truth. Deep down you know it too. You are imposing an image. Soon it will be shattered because against reality no illusion can last long. Soon you will find a dirty old skull. Then ordinarily you will be disappointed, miserable and you miss the point. If you could have laughed you would not have missed it. 
This is what normally happens. We enter into a relation, consider that illusion as reality, and soon you become disillusioned, disappointed. Life turns into a misery, but you cannot see the point. You are disappointed, miserable, and you miss the point in that very misery and disappointment. If you could have laughed, you would not have missed it. Even when you understand that things are not the way you had imagined them to be, you dump the whole responsibility on the other. A woman who was beautiful turns out to be a bitch. A man who had thought to be hero turns out to be just a hand-packed husband. You are not going to laugh at yourself. You will throw the whole responsibility on the other person that he deceived you or she deceived you, that he pretended to be something that he was not and she was not so beautiful as she was pretending. With all the makeup she deceived him, but no makeup is needed. Your illusions, your hallucinations, your lust is enough. The greatest makeup in the world. Your illusions and hallucinations, along with lust, is the greatest makeup in the world. So whatever you want, whatever you desire, you project. And when that projection proves wrong, there are two possibilities. One is to dump the whole responsibility on the other, who is simply innocent of what you were seeing in her. And that is how the entire human life goes on. We do not see the other point. In fact, when you say to the woman, you are beautiful, and this and that, she wanders. Because she also looks in the mirror and she does not find anything that you are talking about. But why disturb yourself unnecessarily? Why not enjoy? It fulfills her ego. Even the ugliest woman will not object. Say that you are wrong. She will smile and accept all your compliments. And standing before a mirror, she may think that perhaps she is wrong. How can that man be wrong? Why should he be wrong? In each love affair, both the persons are innocent as far as they are concerned, but both are responsible for projecting upon the other something which is not there. I have heard a, a story about Mullah Nasruddin. He had a beautiful house in the hills and once in a while he used to go there and sometimes he would say that it would take him three weeks to rest or two weeks or four weeks but he never managed to keep the date and he had given for his return, that he will stay there for three to four weeks. He would always come sooner. If he had gone for three weeks, within two weeks he would be back. His friends started asking, you plan for three weeks and then you come back in two weeks, sometimes even in one week. What is the matter? He said, you don't know. I have an old woman servant. They said, 
what has that to do with you remaining in the hills and relaxing? You should have come back after the designated time that you wanted to stay for holidays for two weeks. He said, first listen to the whole thing. She is so ugly. That is why I have chosen her. She is my criteria. When she starts looking beautiful to me, then I escape. Then I know. Now, Mullah, this is not a safe place. You have lost your mind. So I go for three weeks. But what can I do? In three days, she starts looking beautiful. And if I stay one day more, I may propose her. And she is really ugly. It is difficult to tolerate her. But I have kept her specifically for this purpose. So that when I start losing my mind, I will know it is the right time to leave and come back home into the world. This is how the life goes on. You project. The project in you project, the projection fails. If you could laugh at yourself, then get a breakthrough. This is the message of the story. The man was thirsty in the night. It was a projection. Even in the full moon night, a skull is a skull and dirty water is dirty. But he was thirsty. It was his thirst that projected clean, crystal clear water in a beautiful bowl and he drank with joy. In the morning he was not thirsty and there was sunlight. He looked at the bowl. It was a dirty old skull and he had drunk from it. If he had known that it was a skull filled with dirty water, he would have rather suffered thirst than drink from it. But his thirst projected an illusion. You are thirsty for a man, thirsty for a woman, and that thirst creates a projection. We are doing it every moment of our life, projecting illusions about people, about things, getting frustrated continuously, disgusted. The story is saying to you, these are the moments. If you can understand that it was your projection, this is the time to laugh at yourself, at your own stupidity, at your own foolishness. That will be an act of tremendous intelligence. And it will be freeing you from that constant projection, frustration, that whole vicious circle that surrounds you. An old monk with his young disciple was passing through the forest, going to another town. And the young man was very puzzled because the old man had never walked like that. He was almost running and clutching his back. And once in a while he would feel something inside the back. The young man could not imagine what he had in the back. And the old monk was again and again asking, Will he be able to reach the town before sunset? And the young man said, Even if we do not read, we have nothing to fear. We can stay in the forest. We have stayed here so many times. So it is not new. But today you seem to be a strange in a different. You have a difficulty. The old man said we will discuss it later on. First be fast. I do not want to stay in the forest tonight. By the side of the road, 
was well and the sun was just setting. Before sunset, they washed themselves. They were really tired. They drank. And while the old man was washing his face, he gave his bag to the old man and told him, Be careful. The young man said to himself, He had never been this way before. And out of curiosity, he looked into the bag. In the bag, he was carrying two bricks of gold. Now everything was clear. Why the monk cannot stay in the forest? Why for the first time he was so afraid? While the old monk was washing his face and doing his evening prayers, the young one threw those gold bricks into the forest, found two stones weighing almost the same as the bricks and put them in the bag. The old man finished his prayer in half the time. He was in such a hurry. He immediately took the bag from the young man and the weight showed him everything was okay. He rushed on. After a mile, it was getting dark. The old man said, it seems to be difficult to reach the town and the place is dangerous. But the young man said, don't be afraid. As far as danger is concerned, I have thrown it by the side of the well. He said, what do you mean? You have thrown the danger by the side of the well, said the old man. He said, look into your bag and you will know. He looked into the bag and said, oh my God. The old man laughed through the bag and sat under the tree. He could not stop laughing. The young man said, why are you laughing so much? He said, I am laughing because you have done the right thing. And for almost a mile, I have been befooling myself with those stones, thinking they were gold. Now, we can sleep under this tree. It is good. There is no fear and there is no hurry. He could have been angry at the young man and missed the point. But he laughed, laughed madly because he could see the point. It was so stupid of me, the young man had proved far more intelligent than me. My own disciple had to teach me the lesson. They slept the whole night. In the morning, the old man touched the feet of the young man and thanked him. Although I am your master, you helped free me from an illusion and I slept so deeply the whole night. I had not slept for a few nights because of that bag. Those golden bricks would not let me sleep even in the night. I was grouping in the bed and trying to find out whether they were there or not. Those bricks had become so important that I lost my joy. I abridged my prayers, I abridged my meditation. As far as existence is concerned, gold and rocks are not different. It is human illusion. We have projected it. If man is no longer in this world, gold will not be gold, although it will still be itself. There will be no difference in valuation between it and a rock. The valuation and the difference is our projection and then we suffer. So the insight in that small anecdote is great. If you can laugh at yourself, when any of your illusions fall away, be with your husband or wife, or anyone else or anything else, soon you will be able to live without illusion.
to live without hallucination, to live without projection, and to live without all such things means to live in peace and to live in silence and to celebrate the small things of life is the way of awakening.